Hey, what's up guys? So behind me here is what I am calling my tool wall. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I built it, give you all the little tips and tricks that I learned along the way, in case somebody else wants to replicate this or build something similar. So the main reason I decided to do this was for efficiency. And what I mean by efficiency is because all the tools are actually up on the wall like this, it saves a ton of storage space. Plus, when I'm actually looking for a tool and need to use it, I can easily find it, grab it, use it and another added bonus is it helps remind me to put my tools away and back where they belong because when you see something like this it's like oh hey there's a missing tool here where is it put it back so essentially what this wall is made of is just a foam and there's a lot of different names for this foam i've heard s5 tool foam shadow foam casein foam but they're all pretty similar if not the exact same thing which is a hundred percent polyethylene. It's essentially layers of this foam and this foam has some unique properties in that it holds its structure well. It's easy to cut out and they put it in layers so that you can cut to a certain depth and then tear it on that layer so you can have a bunch of different depths and you know put tools on it. So black is definitely the most common color and then I see a lot of black and red but getting some unique colors like yellow isn't as easy to find. I actually ordered mine from a place called kaziansource.com. And the biggest reason I ordered there is they had really good pricing and they offered yellow. And since most of my tools are DeWalt, I thought yellow would look the best. So I actually got four sheets that are four foot by two foot. And the thickness of the sheets, the thickest they make is 57 millimeters or two and a quarter inches. And I actually took two of those and glued them together so I could get a full four and a half inches of depth so I could hang heavy tools like this circular saw or this framing nailer here as you can see. So here's how I got my four sheets of Kaysian foam and this is how they're packaged and the reason I wanted to show this was I saw another YouTube video where someone was complaining about the way that these arrived um, basically saying that during the shipping process they kind of had some um, you know damaged corners and whatnot. As you can see there my foam was actually curved and bent, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, but I don't know if it's possible to get perfectly square flush Kaysian foam or if this is just how it always is due to the manufacturing process. I recently just sold my table saw and I don't have a track saw, so I thought the easiest way to make this would be to use a bunch of one by twos. Um, from Home Depot that were already, you know, pre-squared and dried. I bought these uh, eight foot sections here and the reason why I went with one by two is really it's one and a half inch by three fourths of an inch and if you put three one and a half inches together you get exactly four and a half inches which was the width of the two foam sheets put together. I got nine of them and I glued them into groups of three so I had three groups of three. Then as you can see here I just cleaned them up a bit after gluing them, took off the stickers and whatnot now I was ready to start making some cuts. So I'm a little worried because I feel like I only get one shot at this and we got a bit of a bow here in the uh, panels. You can see they have a natural like bow which makes it really hard to measure. I feel like that these were actually cut while they were bowed. So I feel like, you know, if you can see the bottom is a little bit longer than the top. And my solution is going to be to flip it so that when we try to combine them, you know, they kind of come together. You can kind of get an idea there. But I'm just trying to calculate how long do I actually want this so that I can fit it and so that it's tight and so that it works, which is proving to be a bit challenging. I ended up just using the length of the boards, which was eight foot. I did have to cut at the ends, as you can see me doing here, just to make sure they're square and flush, and I lost about a 16th of an inch. So my length was just under eight foot, or right at 95 and 15 sixteenths of an inch long. Now each one of the four sheets of foam I got was slightly different in measurements and the smallest width that I measured was 23 and a half inches, but some were more closer to 24 inches. So I decided to make the inside of my frame 23 and a half inches, thinking I could at least squeeze the foam to fit in there by half inch if needed to. So the sides actually cut to exactly 25 inches because I was just gonna slap them onto the side and make these pocket holes as you can see here. So 23 and a half plus three fourths plus another three fourths is 25 inches. All right, now that I had the frame assembled and screwed together, I went ahead and painted it all black. 
I mainly just worried about the three sides that you'd see and wasn't too concerned about the side that'd be up against the wall. All right, my plan to attach the frame to the wall was to find the studs in the wall, put three pocket hole screws on the top, and screw directly into those studs, which you can see me doing here now. Um, it was pretty straightforward and easy. Just uh, used a level to make sure it was uh, as level as I could get it. Now, where I ran into an issue was my plan was to just use one pocket hole screw on the bottom and go into a stud towards the center to help provide support so that that bottom eight foot board wouldn't bow. However, as you can see me doing here when I drove in the pocket hole screw, it lifted it a bit so it was no longer level and it was uh, actually making it so it was thinner in the middle than on the edges. So the way I fixed it is I just chopped a little piece of wood up here and then used that to get it perfectly uh, flat and level and then I just uh, screwed that directly into the stud and now I was ready to start dry fitting my um, foam. I just need to figure out a way to configure this best I can with the four pieces I have so that the final layer has the best fit and finish. And what I'm really looking for is just, you know, as flush as possible. I don't want any gaps. See, this one's extra tight on this side. and this side. So I already know this is going to be one of the panels I want in the front because it's going to be tight and have a flush finish. But I'm going to glue the two pieces together with this uh, 3M Super 77 adhesive. Dries fast. It's got foam written on the bottle that it'll help adhere to that. Really what I want to do is, since I know this is the configuration I want, I really just want to glue the two pieces, top and bottom, the piece underneath this, to this guy. Same with this guy. So what I'm going to try to do is kind of just stay towards the center and away from the edges. That way, when I go to pull this out, it'll be together at the right spots, but it won't get stuck along the edges to where I can't pull it out. I just think it'll be a lot easier for me to cut the tools out if I remove this foam, lay it on a table, and can work that way sitting down, can take my time to cut it, versus you know, trying to hold a tool up, sketch around it, and cut. Stop talking and get down to it. in there so tight and now that this one is stuck to the one behind it it's really hard to get it to release but I didn't spray a lot right here so it is loose enough to where it's not attached but it is attached right here which is another reason why I really got to keep it towards the center here and I'm just explaining this in case anybody else tries to replicate a wall like this just trying to give you as much advice as I can so that hopefully it works hopefully mine works they're glued together so if I grab just the outer one it stays together glued together pretty good now that it's out of the frame I'm gonna spray glue in these cracks and uh, just get it completely together and I know it goes back like that so I just need to remember the exact orientation. Um, in fact, I'm gonna write on the back where I can see, just to remind me like this is up, that's down real quick. Now that I got them out of the frame and I'm not risking gluing it into the frame to where I couldn't get it out, I'm just gluing up the edges so that it's all together so that when I start making my cuts, I can uh, treat it as one big piece of foam rather than two separate pieces of foam. I've only done a couple, so I'm definitely no expert, but here's something that I saw on YouTube is basically cutting this down so I have this really thin razor blade and that allows it so I can get around corners really good. Um, another thing you can do is use the depth of the blade for measurements. So if I'm trying to go at this depth, you know, I can put the blade out to about here and I know where this metal guard is is about the depth I'm trying to get to. Um, another big thing is when you're looking at the tool you want to look at uh, 
it from this view and you can see, okay, it's thick up here, thick here, and then it's uh, thin in the middle. So we've got, um, you know, about two and a half, like two and a quarter. And then here it's really only about an inch thick, maybe an inch and a quarter. But it's not that easy when you go into here, especially if you glued two together. I got two layers of black to get through and it, it's kind of hard to have it not land on there. But, and I'm still learning, but uh, you know, obviously I want a deep here, not as deep here, deep here if you look at the profile of that. And it worked decently well, you know, I'll get better, but you'll see like this little knife here, when I'm cutting, um, you have a tendency to go in. So I would just focus on being straight up and down and you can always cut more off so it's better to be close rather than far away and then this little guy here helps me cut around it but this guy helps me get in deep so you'll notice like this little tail right here i like it that it fits it nice and snug but once we get this out i don't know if you can really see get a shot but it's uh it's more of a square cut down here and i'm not as focused on like those little detail things Another tip is, here's some uh, like accessories that go with this guy. And like even the blade, I could hide him under here. But I'm going to cut a little tiny place for this to go, just so that it all stays together. If I need it later, it's there. Just kind of hide it with it. I'll just cut a little, you know, circle or square out down here. All right, so now I wanted to glue the foam pieces in place. I threw some tape just on the face of the frame because it tends to dry clear, but it leaves a little bit of a white residue. Plus I didn't want it to be tacky and sticky on those sides. And I only did the top and the sides because that's really where I was putting the glue. I didn't worry about putting the glue down on the bottom because gravity would kind of hold that in place. And I knew I needed glue there because I had tried to put it in without the glue and the weight of the tool would tend to pull the foam out. So you can see here, threw in the glue along the wall and on the uh, top and two sides and then I put the foam into place. Now when I did this, I realized that I didn't have much working time before the glue started to set. So if you're gonna do this, that's the most important part is to work super quickly when you do that and I even made some mistakes to where some of the foam is indented a little bit more versus other places it's not and I kind of messed up the sides if I could redo one step that would be it so if you want to learn anything from me uh, focus on that step have everything ready spray it quickly and then put it into place as quick as you can so you have a little bit more time to reassituate the foam and fix any of the edge stuff but it turned out really good not a big deal just uh, trying to help you out in case you choose to do this. Now you can see when I put up the tools, I basically had to recut some stuff out. I didn't have to, but I noticed the heavier tools on the left here. When you're got it face down and gravity's holding it down, you don't think you have to make them that deep, but when you put it on the wall, you can feel that they have a tendency to want to fall out more. So I cut the big heavy tools a lot deeper just so that they're really stuck in the foam. And here's the finished result and what it looks like. So again, here's the final product and how it looks. A couple other tips that I would give for anyone that's gonna attempt to do this. This first one that I cut out that had a little slot on the inside of the tool, I accidentally cut that off. I learned my lesson there and you can see like here, here, and here, I kept it there. But if you accidentally do that, not all is lost, don't worry. You can replace the insert like I did here. Basically, I just took another piece of foam, used my tool to cut out the piece, and then glued it on there. But another tip about that, don't try to use hot glue like I did, because the hot glue is actually gonna melt the foam. You need to use super glue. And worst case scenario, this isn't necessary. I just like the way it looks to have that insert there. Another thing I would have done differently is my heaviest tools, I would actually put towards the bottom rather than the top. And this was one of the heaviest tools right here, especially with the angle that it was at, how I originally put it in there. So what I was trying to do when I was recutting it out after I had it up on the wall, was make it so that the weight was actually like coming into the foam and pressing down rather than pulling it away from the foam. Maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So the way I have this situated in here is I'm trying to lean the majority of the weight towards the back so if you can see how this tool is, 
I'm trying to make this the furthest point in so that it almost like wants to fall back into the foam rather than pull itself away from the foam. Hopefully you can see this cut insert here. You know, you can see I have this line that goes all the way to the wall and I'm trying to match that up with this piece. So again, it kind of like sits in there. So it doesn't want to pull the top of this foam away from the wall. If I could redo it, I definitely would have put this tool at the bottom and probably put something like this reciprocating saw towards the top, but it turned out all right. You can see when I put this in there, I put it in, I'm really trying to make that happen to where it wants to fall into the foam. Now another little cool trick is you can get like a flange washer, which is just kind of spread out. You could even buy them in black and put them on the surface, or you can do what I'm gonna show you here is I actually cut out a circle, put in a screw with a washer on there. I cut it about an inch and a half deep and made sure that I was screwing into a stud and then put it underneath the surface so that if this has a tendency to pull the foam out over time, I'm not just relying on the glue, I actually am screwed into a stud. I could do that in a couple places. I think I'm fine with just that one there, but it's just another uh, tip or trick that you could use if you want to replicate what I did. All right, so that's it. That's how I built my tool wall. If you like the video, consider subscribing or giving me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. See you in the next one.